Kanagawa. This is a game by Aiello. It is about a 19th century painting and it is a Euro game. It belongs to that family in the sense that you have all of the hallmark of the style of gaming from simple rules, limited luck, uh, beautiful components and a theme uh, but also a fairly fairly abstract gameplay which doesn't have to be a bad thing necessarily. In Kanagawa you will collect cards that can be used to uh, paint a beautiful painting, a beautiful print or to improve your studio and you simply well pretty much you'll do that. That is what the game is about. It is a set collection action selection game in which you're developing different things and of course you're developing them not just because they're beautiful which they are but also to score points at the end of the game. Let me show you how the game works. The game revolves around the use of these cards so that have different backs, so even when they are face down in the discard pile, you get a sense of what's going to be on the other side, if it's going to be a building or an animal, a character, trees, and so on and so forth. These cards uh, each can be used for one or two things. So you can use this side after you acquire the card to add to your print. You will place them in a line to form a beautiful print, trying to uh, create certain combinations of symbols that will give you different points. Here you have a reference to the season, which can be summer, spring, fall, and there is also the storm, which is like a wild, can be can mean any season. Then you have a subject, again, you can see here an animal, tree, building, and so on and so forth. And here we have a symbol that indicates what you need to paint this part of the print. Here you will need a brush on a yellow icon, but we'll see later what that means. Here you need to place one of your, of your brush tokens on a blue icon and so on and so forth. The other part of the, of the card represents the studio and so actually you will flip it this way and you will add it to another area of your personal play area and now you gain the benefit associated with it. For example here you gain you gain a the first player's token and you can now paint green. This will give you this will give you uh, victory points and also the ability to save cards but mainly you will want these icons here because you need them to paint. Here you have a general mat where these cards will be made available to the players. They may be face up when they're placed on these spaces here or placed face down when they're in on these dark spaces here so you only get a sense of what you're going to get. But then you have again your personal area. You start with one of these tiles which are assigned randomly to the players at the beginning of the game. Each has a season symbol, each has a different type of landscape that you can paint. Each is a reminder that you start with two paintbrush tokens and each also has a reminder that you can move one of those tokens around your studio once. Basically during your turn you'll be able to move your paintbrushes around your studio um, a number of times equal to the number of icons because later you may upgrade and get more icons. Now what happens here is this. At the beginning of a round, a player, it doesn't really matter uh, who, will place cards here in the first row, a number equal to the number of players. Suppose that we are playing with three players, then we place three cards there. And I made a mistake there because I was placing one face up. We place three cards. So then in player order, simply, simply the players will decide if they want to take all of the cards in a column or not. Hence we only have one line, that also means only one column. If you decide to take a card now, that's all you're gonna take this round. And suppose that, and the alternative is you can pass. Suppose that we all pass, then we continue placing down cards face up or down as required and we continue like this. Suppose at this time somebody decides to take cards, they decide to take this column, then they will place them in their studio and we'll see how that happens. And then the other players can continue. They can pass or they can, they can continue. Suppose that they both pass this time, then we replenish only the columns that are still available. And of course, when, when we fill up um, the whole column, then players will have to take the card. So now the first player decides to take this one, this set, and the other player decides to take this set. 
However, so uh, when you take the cards, uh, when you take the cards from the mat, you place them in your studio. And again, you can choose to add them to your studio as part of your studio. There are no restrictions. Any and all cards that you get from the central mat can be placed there. However, important, once they are placed in the studio, well, when they're placed in your play area, then you cannot move them anymore. And this is a way to upgrade your, your studio. Also, if you have brushes that have not been assigned, this is when, as a free action, you can assign them to these symbols here. And they will give you the ability to paint subjects that have that symbol there. Suppose, for example, that my studio looks, actually my studio looks like this from a previous round and now this round I just acquired the, these two cards and I can paint this one because it requires a green color and I do have a brush on a green icon so now I decide to paint that one and then I place it this way here attached to my print this way, building the print in this direction. I would also like to paint this one but I don't have any any brush there. Luckily enough I have my one icon there which I used to move and so I used to move the paintbrush there. Now I do have a paintbrush in that type of landscape and I can paint this one which I also add to my studio again moving from left to right and always adding in that direction. Each brush can be used only once per turn before or after you move it. That is if I had another icon I wouldn't be allowed to move this one back here now the same turn and paint something that has that thing. And there are again different types of advantages. For example you get extra brushes, very useful, extra icons to move. Uh, to move your brushes. This is the first player's icon. The first player will have these two tokens here. When you play a card with this symbol you get the little guy and you keep it Oopsie, uh, for the time being which is just a reminder that at the end of the round you will also take the old master and you will become the, the first player. You may have you may add this card to your studio very powerful because it can play it can paint any kind of landscape just keep a paintbrush there and you have a discount of one on anything you're painting but you will lose two victory points at the end of the game. And so pretty much you continue like this you continue like this adding to your studio and or to your print as you add to your studio or your print you may also be able to meet some of the conditions that are described here on these diplomas that will give you extra victory points and may also give you extra benefits depending on the icons there say for example uh, I started with two brushes, right? So through icon effects, uh, I acquire a third one, and now I meet the conditions to acquire this diploma, which I get uh, when I have three brushes. And so I can simply say, hey, I get this diploma here at three brushes, and I take it, I put it in my play area, I become first player, and I have one victory point. However, I could also, when I meet the condition of this one, choose not to take it, and later to, if I ever meet the conditions, of a better tile, of a better diploma in the same category, I can take the better one. Say I don't take the three, I take, and then later I have four brushes, I take this one, which is better. Basically the idea is that you can only have one diploma in each category. This one is for the number of landscapes represented in your studio, number of movement icons, things that you paint, for example, three, four, five trees, two or three different characters or three characters that are the same meet these combinations of animals number of different buildings when you meet the conditions of one of them you may take it or not because you can only have one diploma in each category so if i have two buildings that are different from one another i say yay me i just got that and you had to pretty much take the tile as soon as you can possibly take it or choose to forfeit that and not use that combo at all. Meaning, I have two different buildings, different from one another, yay me, I'm gonna take this diploma. Later, if I build another building, if I paint another building, uh, even though it would meet, now it wouldn't meet those conditions, I cannot take it, because I already have one. So suppose I have two and I decide to wait, 
and then because I want these ones but then you take this one and our friend Jeremy takes this one and now the game goes back to me and I cannot take this one anymore because I missed my opportunity to take it which was when I initially achieved the conditions. So you have a little bit of a spy what your opponents are doing slash push your luck because when you meet the condition for a tile in a category you can take it right away or you can choose to wait at the risk that somebody else may take better ones and then you may not be able to take any diploma in a category at all but again if you commit to one you cannot take the better one later you continue like this until a number of cards have been added to a player's print that would be uh, when a player has at least 11 cards in their print. Also, it is possible that the game will end if the deck is empty, but I think the 11 cards in the print is much more, um, much more probable, at least that is in my experience. When the game is over, you count the victory points that will come from a variety of places. You score victory points for the diplomas that you acquired. You score victory points, a victory point for each card in your print at the end of the game. Just each card in your print plus victory point icons that are visible. Um, and uh, the player that has the First player's token at the end of the game scored two points. So just various sources of points. Another important source is the number of cards, the longest sequence of cards in your print with the same season. For example, suppose that this is my print at the end of the game. I have a sequence of four winter cards because it's three winter plus plus wild then I score four points for that if I had eight of the same season um, no matter which one it is then I would score eight as long as that is my longest one so the effort is that element there that you may want to take into account collect points from every possible source and at the end the player with the highest total is the winner of the game Kanagawa is definitely a gateway game. It is a game that you can play with non-gamers, so they can definitely understand how it works. Or pretty much it is pass or take some cards. That's the decision that you have to make. But then there are interesting uh, wrinkles and other elements there. But it's definitely great so now with the holidays approaching, relatives are visiting, not all of them. Uh, you would be able to play some of the hard, some of the hard stuff on this wall, for example. Maybe more enough is not for Uncle Jedediah, but Kanagawa may be, who knows. So, um, I like that. I like the fact that it's so simple. And in fact, I had a game night in which I had people that I knew bringing people that I did not know. I thought Kanagawa may work. And it did. It really did because it is so simple to teach. Now, it may be a little disorienting when it comes to scoring because, again, none non-habitual gamers uh, think, okay, I get there and I win, or I destroy you and I win. Here, the fact that you collect points from so many sources may be a little bit confusing at the beginning, but that's still fine. I also play with my daughters, so and, and they both enjoyed it, the six and the eight-year-old, so definitely can also work as a family game. In general, gameplay in its incredible simplicity is quite interesting. I actually quite enjoyed it. I enjoyed both uh, the planning that you have to do, uh, which is, of course, uh, very tactical. Uh, it's, you may want to have a certain set of tools in your studio. You also are planning to uh, commit to a season, but ultimately you have to react to the cards that are there. You have to catch the fleeting moment, see the opportunity, see a combination of resources that you may want to take and you have to commit to those, again committing tactically. Definitely it is a game about opportunity cost. I could take these cards now or I could take some of the cards later at the risk that I may miss the opportunity of getting what I want now in the hope of getting something better later. And that's also, uh, speaking about this, uh, the, um, the diplomas. The diplomas can be a little bit fiddly at the beginning because there are just so many different things that you can do. I've seen many times people forget it, not realize and say, look, it was last turn, can I still do it? And really for the game to work, you have to be strict about that. So uh, players have to be okay at the beginning with realizing that sometimes you decide that you want to pass uh, the opportunity to get that diploma to get a better one later. 
and sometimes you don't want to do it but you'll do it because you forget to do it and then it is too late so from time to time those opportunities you choose to miss and sometimes you will miss you will miss them there's just so many diplomas that you may uh, get at any point but for those that actually there is uh, well you're taking them or not taking them as part of your strategy then it is particularly rewarding and satisfying is in fact you decide that you don't want to take a certain diploma and then it gets pretty exciting as you see that people maybe have realized that and now they're trying to beat you to the next diploma so you don't get the next one and it's too late to get the previous one so there is an element of push your luck of I don't say indirect indirect uh, I don't say say opposition it's not like you attack each other with artillery and mortar but definitely there, there are ways of getting in other players ways especially if you see oh he is really trying to build that uh, long sequence of, of winter panels is there a way for me yeah maybe I don't get a lot of winter panels but I get some winter I take it from the other player etc etc um, I'm not entirely sure that the phase down cards really add much. I don't know that the game could not be played uh, with all cards being face up. Um, I don't know, but it's still, I guess, I guess that's a little bit of uncertainty and fun. Uh, the game, probably you're asking, but how does it compare with Bob Ross? And probably if you're thinking about that, and I, people have already asked me, oh, when you make the review of this, tell me what you think about in comparison to Bob Ross. I don't know, they're so different. The only thing that you have in common really is the theme, which is painting and set collection, I guess. But you collect resources in such different ways and you use them in different ways. Uh, um, I don't I don't see pretty much any connection unless, well, they're both games about painting and that's pretty much the only connection I can draw between Kanagawa and Bob Ross, The Art of Chill, which is a good game too. But so is Kanagawa. Kanagawa is actually simpler to play than Bob Ross, but also again, less intuitive when it comes to scoring than Bob Ross, The Art of Chill. I guess I ended up comparing the two of them, darn it. Uh, but Kanagawa is a good game. It's very simple, very linear. You can play with anybody virtually as long as, uh, again, if you're playing with non experienced gamers, you take your time to explain how it uh, scoring works without getting too confused. Otherwise, you can play with anybody. It's pretty it's simple to understand, it is simple to play, and it's fun. It has reasons to be interested. It has reasons to be excited, again, when it comes to see whether or not your gamble to get a better opportunity later pays off or not. In general, Kanagawa is a really fun game.